A new report on the benefits of heat pumps. Welcome back to Text to Nation. I'm Fred Fishkin. Joining us from the Department of Energy's National Renewable Energy Laboratory, NREL, is Senior Research Engineer Eric Wilson. Hi, Eric. Hi, Fred. Well, there are some new findings on the costs and benefits of air source heat pumps. In a new paper you are the lead author of, give us a bit of an overview to start with here. Yeah, so the goal of this paper was to really take an unprecedented look at uh, the costs and benefits of residential air source heat pumps across the U.S. housing stock and uh, do that in a, in a method that is more, uh, more granular and covers the diversity of the housing stock uh, than has been done previously. And we've seen a lot of growth, obviously, I, th I think, in the, in the heat pump category. How, how fast is this growing? Yeah, it's been growing pretty steadily over the past decade. And uh, I just saw that this year was the second year in a row where heat pumps uh, outsold gas furnaces. Interesting. Now, one of the obstacles, uh, seemingly, has been cost. Is that picture changing? Possibly. You know, it's, uh, I sometimes think of heat pumps as uh, the, you know, the, the parable of the blind men and the elephant, because uh, depending on who you are and what your home looks like, um, the, the benefits and costs of a heat pump could be completely different. So for a majority of U.S. households, this, this study found, uh, heat pumps today are cost effective and if, if they're financed, for example, they would be positive cash flow and be saving households money from day one. Uh, if they're replacing a furnace and an air conditioner or say a boiler and, and an air conditioner, um, the incremental cost of upgrading to a heat pump is uh, gonna be paid for out of energy bill savings for a majority of households. And, but uh, a researcher's favorite, favorite two words are, it depends. So what this study finds is that there's uh, a huge variety and it can depend on a lot, a lot of different factors. Um, most importantly, the heating fuel that is being replaced, whether it's electric resistance heating or fuel oil or propane, um, those tend to be more expensive ways of heating and uh, heat pumps tend to save a lot more in terms of utility bills uh, against those types of heat. Uh, for natural gas, it's a little bit of a different story, but there are still um, a, a good number of households, millions of households that would save save money by replacing a natural gas furnace or boiler with a heat pump. How big of a process is it? For instance, if you had a home 20 years old that has a, a, a gas furnace with forced hot air and, uh, and central air conditioning outside, an old unit, is it a big deal to say, I want to switch over to a heat pump? Yeah, that could really depend. Um, it's always good to start thinking about that sooner rather than later. So it's not something that you're thinking about uh, on an emergency basis, because that definitely, you know, if you're cold without heat, um, you're going to want to get heat as soon as possible. So in some cases, you might need to have a new wiring put in for this, the circuit that the heat pump is, is going on. Um, and in some cases, though, this is probably a uh, minority of households uh, you may need to upgrade the size of your your main electric panel uh, the, if it's, say, less than 150 amps or so. Um, it's possible, but there are a lot of households out there that could also um, upgrade to a heat pump, even if they have lower amperage service, say 100 amp service. So it really depends on, on a lot of factors, um, climate, what your existing systems look like. Um, and for a lot of people that have air conditioning, one relatively simple switch would be just to replace your air conditioner with a same size heat pump uh, that just has a reversing valve. And you can keep your, your existing furnace and use that when the, the load of the house um, exceeds what the heat pump can, can put out. Um, so that's another option that was not specifically analyzed in the study, but could be a, a good option for lots of homes out there that currently have natural gas heating systems. I guess there's been a perception that in colder climates, uh, heat pumps can struggle to keep up. Is that accurate? Well, 
that has been accurate in the past, but um, the way I think about it, it really comes down to sizing. You can put in a heat pump that's big enough to meet any load, um, uh, even if the house is extremely leaky and it will meet that load entirely on the coldest day. You might need two of them or three of them, depending on, on uh, how poorly insulated and, and leaky the house is, but you can do that if you really want to. Now that's gonna be pretty expensive though to put in uh, that big of a heat pump or multiple big heat pumps to meet that load. So what we found is there's really a large benefit to uh, performing insulation and air sealing and especially duct sealing if there's any ducts that are located in an unconditioned space before considering a heat pump. And that can really reduce the size of the heat pump that you would be installing and uh, make it that much more, uh, more affordable to install that heat pump. And sometimes you can even avoid the need to install a large electric panel if you're doing that insulation and air sealing work first. Interesting. Well, there seems to be some confusion, I think, about benefits and rebates. And this is, I guess, going state by state, uh, very often the implementation, uh, whether it's smart to buy now or or to wait. Um, what can you tell us uh, about the incentives that are, that are out there and might be coming and whether it pays to wait? Yeah, so there's two types of incentives that were made available through the Inflation Reduction Act. And I would say that a lot of states and utility companies have their own incentives that, uh, that may also be available um, in, in certain areas. Um, the, the incentive that's available to everybody right now is a tax credit, which uh, I believe is $2,000 uh, tax credit for a heat pump that meets a certain efficiency criteria. And so that's available now. Anybody can make, make use of it um, for a heat pump installed this year. And um, so that's something, there's really no cap on the number of people that can take advantage of that. Um, the other type of rebate is, or of incentive is a rebate being made available through state deployed programs for, um, with, with money from the Inflation Reduction Act. And those rebates are designed more so for households that are experiencing lower or moderate incomes. So for a lot of people, it may not make sense to wait for those rebates to become available and go ahead and take advantage of the tax credit that's available now. Um, for households that do have lower or moderate incomes, then maybe it is worth waiting for those rebates to become available, but there is a limited amount of money that's available through those that's um, being provided to each state. So uh, it's also not a guarantee that you would get it if you wait for those. And it's my impression that very often states rely on utilities to implement uh, the, the some of these programs. Um, but your gas utility may be reluctant, I think, to steer you towards a heat pump. Um, yeah, you know, there's a lot of rules around that that vary state by state. Um, and I believe it's the state energy offices in every state that are deploying these, these rebate programs. So that may not necessarily be something that goes through the utility. But like I said earlier, there may be other incentives that are provided by uh, by your uh, electric utility that um, could be, you could take advantage of to install heat pumps. When it comes down to it, what should consumers be thinking about when they're considering switching over to a, a heat pump system? And, and the name as as you you've already pointed out, may, can be a little misleading because you're doing more than heating your home with this. Right, exactly. That's that's one important thing to know is that it provides both air conditioning and and heating. Um, so it's two appliances in in one basically. Um, and so people should know that um, there can actually be a lot of uh, non economic benefits. What the study focused on was the utility bill savings um, that you would get from switching to a heat pump, um, which can be substantial, but there are other benefits that, that we didn't quantify that include um, better indoor air quality. If you look for, especially if you're in a, a cold climate, you're gonna to want to look for a variable speed heat pump that's designed to work in, in cold climates. And a lot of the modern heat pumps are uh, variable speed. So they run at a really low speed the whole time. And what that does is it provides a lot better filtering of your indoor air. So you have cleaner air 
It also provides more even temperature distributions between all the rooms in your house. So there can be these health and comfort benefits that you get from putting in these, these modern heat pumps as well. And then a lot of times homes may not have air conditioning or they may have just window AC units. So putting in a heat pump can provide a lot more comfort in terms of cooling during the summer as well. Terrific. And, and often existing duct work in a home can, can be utilized here? Yeah, definitely. If you have existing duct work, um, that's something that can be used. With heat pumps in particular, it's especially important to make sure that, that uh, those ducts, if they're located, say, in an unconditioned attic or in an unconditioned basement or crawl space, make sure that they're well sealed and insulated. Because heat pumps, especially if they're the variable speed variety that r run at that low speed, um, you know, the whole season long, um, that can increase your, your duct losses. So uh, making sure your duct system is, is well insulated and sealed is even more important for heat pumps than it is for a, a standard furnace or air conditioner. Where are some of the best places to go for, for information or for people who want to take a look at the, the, uh, the paper that you've come out with? Yeah, so uh, the paper is in the the journal Jewel, and um, you can find you can find that online. Um, there's also an NREL news release that went out, which has some information. And um, there's a lot of organizations out there that provide information on heat pumps. You can look on energy.gov from the Department of Energy. Uh, the EPA through their Energy Star website also has information on heat pumps. So those are some some good places to look. And Joule is J O U L E for those yes. who maybe maybe looking at the bracelets instead. So. Yep. And then I would also add that um, I've heard that um, you know websites like Angie's List or uh, things like that can provide good suggestions of contractors. If you're interested in, in pursuing a heat pump, it's important to find a contractor who has experience um, uh, installing heat pumps. Otherwise, they may try to talk you out of it um, because there's um, they've had a bad experience once. But I think we're seeing a growing number of of contractors who uh, who specialize in heat pumps and and have good um, uh, good experience installing them. So, but definitely look for reviews and um, uh, yeah, if you can get get more than one quote. Terrific, great information, and of course, uh, congratulations on, on the work that you and the, and the team there at NREL are doing. Eric Wilson, thanks for spending time with us. Yeah, thanks, Fred. Really appreciate you having me on the show. <laughs>